So why is it that employees from CIG are getting fired or they find themselves quitting? What's the truth behind all of this and how this affects you as a player of this game slash online service? Folks, as always, welcome to the channel. I saw the video from Grumpy and here he is. As always, Grumpy kind of gets it but misses a couple important points. The first one is... Grumpy, uh, UK is no longer in the EU. It's UK is no longer in the European Union. That is a big thing. <laughs> I mean, that was basically what Brexit was all about. UK leaving the European Union. And it is a big point because that's why it's probably not in the best interest of the people uh, that work for CIG to move over there. And that's probably why CIG is interested in relocating everything over there so as to have these tax breaks and pay less their employees. Uh, it's about money, says Grumpy. Yes, Grumpy, it is about money. It is always about money, especially with CIG and usually with most uh, companies. I mean, I'm the biggest proponent of capitalism you can find, but there's always this tension between the product that you're offering, your clients, and what's good business. It's not always the case that the product you offer is the best for your client. It's sometimes a balance between that and what makes you good money. And sometimes it's all about what can I sell that makes the most amount of money screw whatever it is I am offering. As long as I can sell it and people are buying it, who gives a damn, right? We are a for-profit business. That's what we care about. And this is something that sometimes people struggle with. Sometimes people uh, in the forums and spectrum, you would assume that people think this is a fucking charity. It is not. Chris Roberts wants to make money, not Alpha UEC. No, real fucking money to, to buy real mansions and real yachts and have real millions of dollars in his bank account. And that's all good. Now, you as a person that is not a dumbass, you need to understand a few things. Now, specifically here, we have this thing of, uh, yeah, Todd Pappy. That was the first name. But it seems that there's more people being fired or quitting. In addition to game director Todd Pappy, that is a big change, man. If you're not willing to pay your, your game director or if either it's because of pay or you just want to get someone new, you want to... Uh, Todd Pappy, that's strange because that is, that's either super greedy or Todd Pappy quitting because the game is going in a direction that he's no longer okay with. I don't know. This is the part where we don't know. We don't have that information. We can only assume a few things. Now, when they go on explaining that there's a lot more people that are either getting fired or quitting... Also lost lead lead producer Jake Ross. This on the game director and lead producer, <laughs> they're firing their the, the 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 most the key people. Assistant design director uh, director Dan Truffin, whose game profile was changed from developer to backer. Austin lead designer Dan Kubica. Austin QA lead Vincent Sinatra. Austin senior QA and analyst and director and triple in producer Annie Buffard. So all of these. And being in Austin, these are the ones that are being, hey, you have to go to England. And they're saying, hell no, I'm not going there because probably these people are not stupid, right? They don't want to go to England. Why? Well, because this is basically, this is basically CIG firing these people because there's no deal in you going to UK. It's more expensive, a lot more expensive. Uh, you're basically taking a huge pay cut just because of the conditions over there right and the money no matter what you're being paid even you're if you're being paid a little bit more for this for the moving thing it's, it's not a unless it's a lot of money that are putting on top of that it's just not worth it and as it says here it's about lower taxes over there in uk where it's no longer part of you and lower dev wages they're paying you less right now as someone living in the united states in texas going to uk no no because of what i'm saying um it's a huge pay cut. It's a lot more expensive to live there. Probably the, the salary is not going to be nearly as good. And you're dealing with a bunch of other things that most people probably don't even know about, uh, especially if you're not uh, informed about uh, uh, the European Union and Brexit and the deal with, with UK since then. Uh, I, I mean, I have family living there. I've lived in UK myself for a while, and I know how it is because, again, I, I, have, I have my brother living there. Um it is bad. I mean, it's not just that the the weather sucks. <laughs> the food is, is kind of terrible. No, it's beyond that. 
Um, the way it's inflation has has gone uh, up a lot, so wages are a lot less appealing than they used to be back when they were in the EU. Uh, also, the conditions for workers they don't need to be aligned with the standards that are a lot higher from the European Union since they're no longer in it anymore. So they can do a bunch of things that affect your rights as a worker that no longer apply to them. Again, as a not member of the European Union. Uh, the NHS, the medical service that you will have over there, uh, even if they provide something private, both private and NHS, they're both fucking terrible. It's one of the worst, it's by far one of the worst medical services that you can have in all of the European continent. Again, not European Union. The continent itself, it is terrible and people often travel out of UK to get medical attention. Um, people don't get treatment for things that are commonly available elsewhere in other developed countries. Um, and it, it is just a, a huge... No. I mean, they have problems not getting developers, but they cannot even get nurses, uh, truck drivers. This is all over the news. This is not me making shit up. They can't, I mean, they cannot get nurses, doctors, truck drivers. They cannot get enough people to go over there to pick up fucking fruit from, from, the, from the farms. Imagine how bad it is. It is just not appealing. It's not good, good business for you. And... You know, I don't know how many more they're hiring, uh, but it was always the case that CIG was not, based on what I read, it wasn't one of the companies that pay well. Uh, and now, just forcing, I, I don't know, uh, they're probably not interested or they, they just want to reduce that or hiring. But again, they have problems hiring people for a lot less skill-based uh, jobs than uh, game developers or programmers. So, I don't know. They just seem to be a lot more interested in making that company as small as possible, as as profitable as possible. And here is where, how does it affect us? We're always the ones kind of getting screwed. This means that there's going to be less people, by all means less qualified people, and the game development and progress will be a lot less. And here is where us as players, you have to be careful. Yeah, this just shows that there's not going to be a whole lot new content. There whatever it was, there probably never will be, but this just shows where they're going with this. They just want to maximize, again, Chris Roberts is a lot more interested in making real money, not Alpha UEC, buying real mansions, real yachts, real cars, and real millions in his bank accounts, and not, oh, making new stuff for you to play. Unlike other video game companies where they make a product, and if that game is great, they sell a ton of it, and they make a ton of money, this is different. This is a company that... It's in its best interest to stay in perpetual development, never actually finishing anything, and always focusing on the next ship sale that they have. Because people keep keep on buying it. And as long as people keep on buying it, why would you do anything different? Why would you... First of all, why would you ever finish the game in any way? Why would you add new uh, um, content, make massive progress? Why would you do any of that? Why would you do? Um, wh why would you waste money hiring people uh, for new gameplay, new places to explore, new systems, creating new stuff? That it doesn't make any sense. You're not trying to sell a game. You're trying to sell ships that people buy anyway just with a little bit of hype and marketing and a, and a couple YouTube shills, that's enough for you to keep this going. And anything else, it's it considered from a business side as a waste of fucking money. I would be doing the exact same thing, so I'm not blaming anyone here. I'm just saying it as it is. So it's up to you as an adult to understand all of this and say, okay, yeah. If you like what you see in terms of what you can play, uh, by all means, go. Don't waste a lot of money. Definitely don't fall for this bullshit hype of what's coming next because we've seen this with 4.0. It's not even mentioned. Now it's it's not even 4.0 or pyro. Now it's 
323. And even that is being hacked to pieces, losing uh, parts that were supposed to be included in it. We already see how this goes. You're not going to be having your, uh, your vehicles delivered in your personal hangar. We'll see what actually ends up happening for 323. It's going to be probably a shadow of what they promised or, uh, uh, sorry, not promised, but promoted and talked about in, in Citizen Con or whatever the hell it is. And that's just the business of it. You know, don't be a child. Understand how this works. So, guys, I just see this as very bad signs in terms of, will we have new stuff to play? No. I mean, it's already super stale. You know, the, the new settlements are there, and I, I go visit those places, but there's not a whole lot to do. Um, the, the new distribution center things, it's going to be depending on how well those things work, but, man... It is just a, it is a fucking building. Years later, we're still looking forward and with, with expectation for a building to do FPS in. It should be entire planets. It should be cities. It should be systems. Uh, anyway, you know, as long as you enjoy it, by all means, I I think the the the, the bittersweet thing is it it is cool and it has a lot of potential, but the the greed side of things kind of ruins it because they could be a, a tiny less greedy fire a, a, a little bit less people give us a little bit more new content and i guess we would all be happier but if people buy ships anyway then there's simply no incentive to change anything this is the the contradiction that a lot of people don't understand and oh I, i'm just backing because i i love this and i want to see because the more money i give them the more they do no <laughs> it's actually the opposite the more money you give them for doing nothing the more you re you reward the same mechanic of very little, almost no progress year after year, almost, I mean, no new content to speak of year after year in actual, you know, planets, cities, new systems. No, none of that. No. Changing the mechanic of what's already there. You go to this new bunker and you just bring a different box or whatever. No, this box says confidential. So that's a new entire gameplay. Okay. The more of that bullshit they feel they can get away with and they still sell ships and you still give them money, you have no incentive to change any of that. Once you get that through your head, maybe things will start changing one day. Until then, we're stuck in this place. If you like the place we're in, great, fantastic. If you think it's going to be anything different, you're dead wrong. See you on the next one. Take care.